SGD, this will be the video Lost Ancient High Technology and Perfect Exact Symmetrical Statues That Cannot Be Explained. Spoiler alert, it's not gonna it's gonna turn out just about as good as the vases or the Serapium and these other features that they say. Uh, Christopher Dunn is the main man behind this. You'll see it all over the comments, so many videos about it, uh, especially by those promoting tours, books, etc. So let's look at it now. Uh, I'll be linking this, Christopher Dunn, The Great Pyramid Gives Up More Secrets, Origins Conference, from a uh, post on a Megalith Mania channel. And at one hour and one minute until well, the last few minutes he talks about this, I'll also post a link to his book so you can get in further in depth. But this is a screenshot from there, he's showing that picture. Now, first off, as he admits in the video, this is approximated to hundreds of an inch from a photograph, so that this is symmetrical. And well, I hope it's inches. Um, if it's centimeters, it's even worse because hundreds of a cent of a centimeter is bad enough, uh, terrible. Hundreds of an inch is even bad enough. So when you see this image, it looks sciency, it looks technical. Christopher Dunn's an engineer, precision manufacturing, and all of this stuff. First off, this is absolutely bogus and. Uh, even you know, he, he, he admits it that this is he. He just says it's an approximate. What it, what, he, what he really means is that it's basically totally made up, and there's no measurements taken here. It's just uh, photoshopped and then eyeballed. But in regards to symmetry, so let's focus on these features here. Put them together, and you can see I've blended those. So where his little markings are, they're blended there. It's I'm not fiddling with it. Uh, let's extend those yellow lines. Now even notice the lobes at the bottom are quite off. I've extended those yellow lines so you can see the difference. So the yellow line on the left well, you know, matches up with the edge of the ear, but the yellow line on the left shows uh, precision, exactness. No, it shows inexactness, imprecision. All right, now we'll come back to this, but um, the lip feature, okay, but also, so let's look, again, these are photos he's put forward from, uh, we look at the eyes there. Now uh, let's zoom in, compare them. Uh, again, if this is simple, like just sort of cropping and putting them next to one another. You can fact check me that I haven't altered or skewed or anything these pictures. You can check them for yourself. I, I, I'd, I'd, like to some, I'd like someone to do that anyway. So put those together and, uh, geez, it's not looking well at all. It's not symmetrical. This is not precision symmetry. Now the one on the left, I've now placed on the bottom and mirrored it so that it's the same, you know, in the same direction. You can see these are very asymmetrical, very, very asymmetrical. Now we come to this feature, the undercut. And so he's pointing to this part of the lip. Well, on this part of the lip, you can see there, well, there's a, there's a a flaw it's there's an imperfection there and this is the beauty of lost ancient high technology narrative and uh, our way of thinking so no undercut on one side there is an undercut on the other and their premise is that it's lost advanced high technology machining requires cnc machines and this is beyond any primitive technology this has to be advanced you know symmetry machining um well first it's asymmetrical Eyeballing to hundreds of an inch is not okay, and it's even worse with centimetres. Symmetric is one, asymmetric is another. So do they know the definition of it? Let's look at the de definition. Oxford Dictionary, I think that this would be widely accepted as a authoritative source on, on definitions. And I don't think that asymmetry is one of these words that's been redefined recently. So uh, it's a lack of equality or equivalence between parts or aspects of something. A lack of symmetry is asymmetry. There was an asymmetry between the right and left ears. So this is an example used by the dictionary. An asymmetry between the right and left ears. Well, asymmetry between the right and left ears. Asymmetry between the right and left eyes. Asymmetry between the right and left lip corners. But here's the best part about the lip corners. So let's zoom in a little bit. Now, now undercut one side, undercut on the other. This is what uh, Chris Dunn says in the video. Features that people who have worked in manufacturing wouldn't find surprising, and those are mistakes. So, um, you're, again, those promoting Chris Dunn, he's an expert in manufacturing, precision machining. And, and it's insisting machines, high technology, could not have been done by hand. So, that there is a mistake 
is something that people in manufacturing wouldn't find surprising. Well, just as a point of reference, uh, people who work with their hands and are not using machines are going to find mistakes also, and a lot more than what they would buy a machine. So this is how it works. It, these statues are too perfect, too exact to have been made by hand with traditional techniques, therefore advanced, lost, ancient, high technology machining. But when there is a flaw, and at least acknowledge this flaw, well, when there is an imperfection, when there is an inexactness, it is evident that this is also evidence of advanced, lost, ancient technology. Because people don't make mistakes with their hand tools, but machines do. Which, again, it's the... It, the, the contradiction is just remarkable when it, when it comes to this. So it's heads I win, tails you lose. A flaw equals precision machining. Flawless equals precision machining. Everything now is precision machining. No one's ever made anything by hand if you were to work by these particular standards. And this is not just one example. I'm just doing on the symmetry of the statues as well. Okay. So, Lost Technologies of Ancient Egypt by Christopher Dunn. This is the, so whenever you hear symmetry, 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 the expert engineers who are, you know, supposedly have done this, it's Christopher Dunn, in, in, essentially. And there's a screen, that's from his book, links in the description. I'm not putting words into his mouth. Uh, this is what they say. You'll see so many videos on this. It's uh, quite remarkable. Okay, so let's focus in on this particular picture here. Now, notice a lot of... Well, there's geometry and circles here, and he's an engineer, like, dazzling. Look at the look at all the circles. How can this not be precise? Well, so obviously he's made this grid. He's put all the circles in there, so he's examined his own photograph, and it's symmetrical, exact. And let's, what's the quote? Now, Ramesses geometry, plate four. Ramesses geometry speaks of unambiguous quality and exactness. That's what he says. All right, so now let's look at it. So, okay, let's highlight that section to begin with. Let's, uh, we go down. Um, un unambiguous quality and exactness, you say. All right. Now, I've just traced out those lines. Again, I'm not fiddling with it. So you have a red and the blue. Red and blue. Okay, now we get a little bit, uh, bit more clear. And now I've placed them together at the bottom. Exactness, symmetry, precision. Well, okay. well, that's the headdress, mate, and, and you know, for, they're all about symmetry, but they didn't get the, you know, because the headdress, maybe the, it was blowing in the wind and one side was a little bit higher than the other. Fair enough, fair enough. Let's go a little bit further. Okay, so red section, not symmetrical. Let's focus in on this section. More specifically, let's focus in on the top of the ears there. And we show the right, now, notice, firstly, his circles, you know, as far as, no, it just hasn't got it right. These are not small point, but it as part of a bigger picture, it is important. But notice the asymmetrical ear. So even with the ear on the right, which is damaged, we still see the underside of that little curly bit at the top. And then you compare it to the left hand side. This is it's a dog's breakfast. It's not well evident, clear. I don't need to draw a bunch of fancy lines and circles to to realise this. This is just by your eyeballing it very quickly no need to bring in laser scanners they sort of demand well we, we must go through all of Egypt with high quality lidar and, and the most precise scanning equipment uh, for them this must be this work must be done for them well they can't even freaking eyeball uh, asymmetrical ears to start with now now we go down a little bit further so here on the right six units now, from the inside of the line to where the ear starts to curl, and we go on to the other side, f four units, three and a half. So it's almost two to one inexactness, asymmetry in there. And that's including the damage done on that part of the ear. So that's not a, a, a way to get yourself out of this particular mess. So, nope. So, asymmetrical, imprecise, that you don't require, you know, everyone else m must not go and do this work for them because based on this, this is the level of, of diligence that they've done and it is zero. All right, so let's go a little bit further down. Okay, so now again, the circles don't match up, but those are the highlighted spots. 
place them together again notice I've, the lines are lined up and let's do a little extra test so on one side here again six units we go out and we get to the edge of the ear there and on this side uh, not even so it's six to one maybe no no six to one that's the asymmetry in there and again visible by did he not look at his own grid he's drawn this fancy grid and all these circles did he not look to compare obviously he has but he's very tricky this fella and they are in general they know these they sound authoritative they do this you know lovely music and scripted and just flash in the pan video you know visual so you'll see a visual like that you'll you'll just get all these grids and stuff and think oh yeah yeah but if you've just pause a few seconds, whether it's the vases, the uh, Serapium, or these statues. You just pause it for a few seconds and examine it, which they never do because they know that this will all come out. And so we go again. Nuts. So let's look further and take a look, close look at the nose. Right, zoom in now. Again, the circles are off. So let's say that is the black line in the, that's the center line. Is that the one to follow, or is the center line created by his? circles there to follow well either way it's not good because there's so much more weight on this side of the bridge of the nose uh, compared to the other side again clearly visible uh, and now furthermore so let's again these are his lines and let's look at the distance between the nose to those points so set that to six units and compare it on the other side and it's will touch over three. So again, it's a two to one difference in symmetry and perfection. Other words, it's asymmetrical, it's inexact, it's not precise. Close up of that, just to give you an idea again. Six, one, two, three, and, and a sliver. So again, nah, not even, and again, the nostrils as well. So I'm just going through some of the features. You could just like, just keep going further and further down. So this, well, that's not symmetrical. That's not symmetrical. That's not symmetrical. Well, let's look at this piece. Is this symmetrical? Well, what's that little bit between your top of your lips and your nose? Not symmetrical. And furthermore, even the lips, you know, maybe there's been a bit of damage on the lip on the right-hand side. Fair enough. But uh, that nose has not been damaged that's asymmetrical that's off center as well no doubt what no argument about it so uh Ramesses geometry speaks of unambiguous quality and exactness it's a fine piece of artwork let's not you know let's not poo poo it at all it is a fine piece of artwork but if the argument is that it's symmetrical unambiguous quality and exactness unambiguous quality and exactness so it's unambiguous exactness no it's unambiguous inexactness again definition of asymmetry do they must know what it means they say it so often pump out so many videos about it blog posts go on tours promoting it so again, there isn't the example by oxford there was an asymmetry between the right and left ears well yeah same here and there's and the nose and the lips and the headdress and even other features so if you, you just need to take a uh, still image and examine it sort of closely and by his own grid that is shown it's well asymmetrical for instance this curve here above the, the brow and compare it with that brow curve over there um, these well, the ones i've shown are by no means the only clear and evident and unambiguous inexact asymm asymmetry in these and these are the ones promoted as the best okay i haven't got their worst example just like with the vases symmetrical perfection then you you take us you get a screenshot and you look at it and like it's wonky the, the handles aren't symmetrical the holes in the handles aren't the yeah um that, that's how they get you with these fancy circles and he's an engineer and look the geometry look there's a pythagorean triangle that like oh my god there's a three four these grids are three four five triangles that is oh, that's remarkable well <laughs> it's a joke all right so unambiguously this is asymmetrical and inexact as with the other one they're prime examples 
how did they examine it? Well, they photoshopped it. They took a photo, put it in Photoshop, put this, you know, grid and, you know, dazzle the eyes with circles. And, well, so except for all the parts where it is unambiguously inexact, even with a quick ex inspection just by the eye, you don't need all the, you know, and now they're insisting that all of Egypt, from north to south, the archaeologists and must they must pay and they must do the work to do all this scanning of every hole and every uh, core drill and every and all the all the surfaces must be done to satisfy them. They haven't done anything. They haven't contributed anything. If I really cared about it, where's their money? Why aren't they putting their money into funding a dig or an examination? Uh, they talk about the cover up, but literally these guys are lazy asses. They've done nothing. They've been selling the same crap for 20 years, even when they're proved incorrect, politely, they just repeat it over. And so this deserves to be mocked. This is it's really, it's, there's no point being nice with these people because they are, they are habitual liars. And they will not, even when corrected, they still go back to this old stuff and repeat it because it's all about the dosh. It's all about the gold. All right, so again, here's some examples from Christopher Dunn's... Oh, look, there's a oh, Fibonacci flower of life. Oh, like, oh, wow. Look, this, this is obviously high-level science. Like, you, you can't argue with this. Look at it. There's circles and, and grids and like a three, four, five triangle. And, you know, why not a... 5, 12, 13 uh, Pythagorean triplet. Well, I don't know. Anyways, uh, flower of life. Okay, so, you know, it fits in for some reason because it's a circle. <laughs> like, like what, what? This is mean, This is meaningless fluff. I love flower of life and, and Euclidean geometry, sacred geometry. It's the name of my channel. For years and years I've been examining it. I've got my own kooky ideas. Uh, I put those forward. I got, you know, I got no problem with that. Um, but what I do have a problem with is this fluffiness of it. Like this is just woo. It's meaningless. It's dazzling the eye. Cheap magician's trick is all that is. And so let's do an example of what, what you know. Is a sculpture from the Art Gallery of New South Wales. Let's put it on the other side. So okay, of. Top of the eyes got circles there, you know, circle from the bottom of a top lip, and look at, you know, it, the ed edges of a nose, it's in there, okay? So the bottom of the lip, if I draw a, ah, oh, look, goes around the top of the head. Well, this is clearly evidence of advanced, lost ancient high technology. People in the 1800s, 1700s who did sculpture, like they could not have done this by hand, this symmetry, this perfection. Couldn't it not be done? Everywhere is lost ancient high tech. If you apply the rules, okay, well, there's a vesica there, and well, it sort of doesn't match, just like with the other circles. It's close. It's really close. You know what I mean? I didn't even. You know, I could have adjusted it and and put it there and sort of married the ears a little bit better. But uh, but look, notice that that it does match almost with the top of the yellow circle. So this is look the chin line like precision. This is unbelievable precision. They clearly had advanced CNC machines, you know, all over the world because no one's ever done any handwork in their life. Okay, oh, now, so we use the bottom of your eyebrows and got circles there. Is, uh, oh, I don't look, there's got to be some sort of um, universal constant there, Euler's number, we've got, got you know, pi, golden ratio, something that, like it has to be there because, you know, and I'm, I'm a fly, I'm a Fanatic, I love fire. And I think it's a beautiful thing as well. But you, you can find it everywhere if you look for it everywhere. You can find free if you apply three, four, five triangles as your grid. You're going to get them all the time. If I look up bullshit on the internet, I'm going to get pictures of bullshit. All right, now, oh, let's put some other no, another circle from the bottom of a nose, and we're catching it right through the centres of the eye, across the top of the brow there, a bridge of a nose. Well, that fits perfectly too. Obviously, this is a message from the past, you know, to telling us the date and the place at which the cataclysm is going to hit the earth and how we can save the world. All right, so from the bottom of the closed eyelids, we well, look, they, they match. Look, they touch, and they touch the, the vessel in the vesica. This is obviously, look, circles, geometry, lots of buzzwords, start, you know. 
So uh, I posted a video a while back how to make giant symmetrical Egyptian statue without ancient giant technology C and C machines, how people who still make giant sculptures, how they do it with very primitive techniques because they work so well. Uh, that will be linked in the description. Uh, the precision lost ancient high technology of a serapium. No, nope. you know, not only is it false, you can, you know, you can catch the guys out faking and fudging the information in there as well. So nope, that's and fatal flaws in lost ancient high technology stone va uh, vases and vessels. This is another one of their thing. Well, no, it isn't there as well. Just like with this method, take some stills, use their examples. This <laughs> follow their own rules. Look at the best example and examine it. Um, and so, yeah, it, it's just, it's all a big joke. It's not just one feature. It's not just the other. It is the entire thing. It is a con uh, or self-delusion. At the very least, it's self-delusion. And given the fact that the ones who make money off it still repeat the same things I was saying years ago when they demanded experiments be done, they were done. And it, instead of like saying, okay, this has been shown, they censor that and they repeat the same lies and that's a lie because if you know something's incorrect and you're doing it again, that's a lie. And if you're lying for uh, for money, it's you're a fraud. So here's a guide to understanding lost ancient high technology speak. Whenever they say precise, it means imprecise. When they say symmetrical, it means asymmetrical. When something is flawless, it's clearly machined. When there's a flaw in something, it's clearly machined. Steep mountainside equals a gentle ramp. Reality equals fiction. This is how it works. So. Precision, exactness, symmetry, perfection. They keep using these words, but I do not think it means what you think it means because it doesn't. <laughs> it just doesn't. It's all made up. And he, now here's some lost ancient high technology by Henry Hoke from Hoke's Bluff, the random excuse generator. Um, so let him shift the goalposts or whatever, but uh, you know we're not going away either. And bring in some new bit of woo and then try and you know, dazzle the mind but ultimately you're going to be held to account because you're doing this for money you know your frauds and uh, and they're deceiving people and so you know uh, if you people say well why do I am angry why am I upset because they're lying <laughs> and they do it all the time and they're lying to huge audiences and then people have to deal like myself and others have to deal with these people who have been taught these lies coming over and oh but you must do this i do this do that copper chisels lol so yeah like if uh, i don't know if, if you if if you upset that i'm angry about it then ask what does what upsets you when do you get angry when do you get passionate about something like wh when do you draw the line like for me it's habitual lying for profit that actually impacts on my life and my business because this is what, you know, I have to deal with this too and everyone else has to. You see, great history channels basically have to close their comment section because they get flooded by the numbskulls, in, you know, the, the crazy fanboys which come from this Christopher Dunn, Brian Foster, Uncharted X, Bright Insight and, and so many others uh, from this. So it is, it's a scam. Every When they say... If, it's, if they say it's black, it's white. If it's white, it's black. And they know it. It's not just, yes, they know it. And they censor and, well, what's more to be said? They lie and they censor information and then they charge money to, you know, people who have saved up, you know, who don't have much money to begin with, go on these tours and these people just lie to them. It's fraud. Sue me, you know, this is published, this would be defamation. Let's, I'd love to have this examined uh, in, in, a pub, in, a, in public, uh, but, you know, the Streisand effect. So it is, it's a silly scam and there's no two ways about it. Uh, and that's why they don't have the balls to debunk the debunkers. They can't even admit to it. They're cowards too as well, cowards, frauds and cowards. And that's it. No more necessary. Have a good one.